I don't think I have to tell you that if you live in Pennsylvania, you experience many different seasons. I didn't finish the sentence yet. Many different seasons throughout Memorial Day weekend, right? I mean, this year we've had the really hot and humid season. We've had the cool season in the mornings, and last night we had the torrential rain season. Some years we've even had the cold snap season, right? That's how it is. You never know what you're going to get. And you know, this particular weekend, Memorial Day weekend, stirs up many seasons in our souls as well, if we think about it. I mean, if you're out for the first time since, uh, you know, the warm weather got here and going to a picnic or taking a walk in the park or fishing or swimming or doing something like that, wow, that's a happy season. On the other hand, if you're part of a very solemn parade or a service tomorrow or even like what we're going to do here very briefly, that can be a solemn and maybe even something that evokes grief and has you relive a tragic part of your life. And of course, there's the season that I like, the lazy season, where you just flop down on the couch or on the back porch and enjoy a little time of rest, right? Well, did you know that our scripture contains for us a resource for every season, helping us deal with every season or whatever the reason for the season is? And I'm talking about the book of Psalms. Yes, there's a psalm for every season and every reason. Now what you need to know about the book of Psalms is the book of Psalms is pretty much a book of songs, S-O-N-G-S. -S. We call it the book of Psalms because that word psalm comes from a Greek word, psalmos, and the uh, word basically means song. Psalm means song, or psalmos means song. It comes also from the Hebrew word mitzmor, which also means song. So the book of Psalms is a book of songs, but they were inspired by God to be relevant as a way to praise God at different seasons of your life. Did you know we have psalms of praise, where we give praise to God, psalms of thanksgiving, where we say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us, and also psalms of lament where we either express our sadness or yikes in some cases, the psalmist expresses his complaint to God. Psalms of trust and meditation, and there are even psalms that we call imprecatory psalms. They're kind of dangerous. Do you know what imprecatory psalms are? They're the ones where you cheer God on and pray for his victory over his enemies. The enemies of God, get them, Lord. That's an imprecatory psalm. Now, in my opinion, the book of Psalms served as a way for God's ancient people, when they heard them in worship, when they memorized them, to act as a kind of therapy, ancient therapy for God's people. And it does so for us today. So we're going to look at one particular psalm. Believe it or not, it's a psalm of praise. Now, you might say, why on Memorial Day weekend will we do a psalm of praise? Because a lot of times when you think of Memorial Day, and especially the service of remembrance we're about to have, don't you think there should be something a little more subtle, maybe a little more sad, like a lament or something like that? That's fine. But this particular psalm that we're going to look at, Psalm 145, is one that gives praise to the Lord because the Lord upholds. Meaning that when you go in that bad season of life, whether it's grief, whether it's hunger, whether it's a crisis, God is always there for us, always providing for us, and it never, ever stops his provision for his people. That's who our great and wonderful God is. So what we're going to do is read the entire psalm, Psalm 145, but focus in particular on verses 14 through 19. I mean, that's the part that we're going to really look at in particular. But Psalm 145, and I beg your pardon because I have not turned there yet, but we invite you to turn there in your own Bibles, or you can use um, your phone or your app or some device like that that may be helpful. Or if you want to use one of our pew Bibles, I'm almost there in the pew Bible. It can be found on page 621, 621. 
Psalm 145. Let's read the whole thing and very briefly look at those verses that remind us that the Lord upholds us, and that's why we praise him. Psalm 145, a song of praise of David. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. Now pay close attention to these beautiful words coming up next. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Oh, isn't that a wonderful thing to read and to think of for our own mental health? I mean, you think of all the garbage that is put forth to us every day, whether it's stuff that we see on the news. By the way, people that watch 24-hour news channels, not good. You're going to need to read a lot of psalms to counteract that. Or if you look at the responses of people that what they have to say on things like Twitter, nastiness and cutting people down and all the discouragement and just all the negativity out there and all the ungodly things that we see going on. Isn't something like this, a reading like this, a blessing? Why don't we see this all over the blogs or all over TikTok? I don't have TikTok, by the way, a lot of people do, or YouTube or whatever. This is exactly what we need. As you saw there in the first 13 verses, there's a background where, first of all, in the first two verses, the psalmist just starts giving praise to the Lord. And then he builds by looking at verses 3 through 7 by praising the Lord because for all he does for us. And then going into verses 8 through 13, there's praise given to God because he is, he is gracious, compassionate, and good. So praises to God, just in general, then for what he does and for who he is. That pretty much covers it all. Great reasons to give praise to the Lord. But now focusing in this message on verses 14 through 19, let's look at how the Lord upholds us whenever we're in a season where Memorial Day may trigger something for us that maybe stirs our soul in a way that's sad or, or grievous or makes us relive something of the past that was kind of traumatic. What does the Lord do for us? Well, in verse 14, it says very clearly, he upholds all who fall and lifts up all who bow down. Those who fall or those who are bowed down are those who are facing tremendous burdens and pressures in life. If that's where you're at right now, 
God is there for you if you are one of his followers. Don't forget that and don't let the guys out there that have all of the negativity on the blogs or on the phone or on the news or whatever make you think otherwise. The Lord is on our side. In verses 15 through 16, we're reminded of God's great provision. How all in this world, every creature looks to the Lord for food and he satisfies their desire. He desires, he satisfies, excuse me, the desire of every living thing, opening his hand to those that are in need. Yes, the immediate context refers to food, our physical sustenance that we need, but we know that God provides for us in other ways as well. And it is good for us to both remind ourselves that when we think that we are prideful and we just think, well, look at all that I've done for myself or how much money I've earned or how well I've done in life, you better remember it's the Lord because of him that you have what you have and I have what I have. Ultimately, without him, we'd have nothing, zippo, zero. But it's also a comfort for us to remind ourselves that God will provide for us, maybe not when we're in those prideful seasons, but when we have a need, he's there for us. And verse 17 reminds us that God does everything right. He never, ever makes a mistake. That's incredible to me. I make a lot of mistakes. I flub up a lot. Sometimes I think I try to be too funny, goofy, or corny. I did that the other night, I think, at Coffee House, and it didn't go over too well. Other times I get kind of discouraged or angry. That doesn't go over well. And sometimes even up here, someone said to me, we appreciate that you preach the Bible. I said, I appreciate that you say that, but believe me, I've made mistakes. Either someone has come to me afterwards, thank you, by the way, or I went home, looked at what I said, that's not right, and I've had to correct it. Hey, we're human. But God doesn't do any of that stuff. He gets it right every time. And in verses 18 through 19, we're reminded that he is near to all who call on him. Today, if through memorializing those loved ones that have gone on before us, those who pass from this life and into the next, if it gives you anxiety, if it gives you sadness, if it gives you grief, remember, call on him and he is with us. Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, don't be anxious about anything. That's hard to do. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's what he'll do for you because he is with you as a believer in Jesus. So I don't know what kind of seasons you've experienced and will experience this Memorial Day weekend. I don't know what's going to happen with us as we remember those that have gone on from this life into the next in the servants of remembrance. It may bring you joy. It may bring up memories of the past. It may bring brief, grief and loss to you. But remember that our God who satisfies every desire of every living thing, he is with us. He will be with us. He's worthy of our praise. Truly, the Lord upholds. Amen.